Hello Internet, it's been a minute. Sorry, I've been busy for the last couple of months. I uh, moved back down to New Orleans and I'm helping my friend run her bar, at least for the short term. This week is historically the slowest week of the year for the bar, so we're shutting down and everyone is taking a much needed mental health vacation. I'm going on a road trip and I'm taking you with me. But first, I gotta make some coffee. See you on the road. First stop of the trip, gotta get some gas. And also probably some beef jerky. I know gas station beef jerky has a bunch of stuff I don't want to put in my body, but I do love beef jerky. Everybody knows that the best road trips start by breaking into your bar and stealing ice for your cooler, because who wants to pay for ice? And then of course stocking your cooler with the free beers that the reps bring us. You know, I had this conversation with my general manager this morning where I realized I try and make myself really worried about productivity even when I'm supposed to be having a good time. And in my head I was thinking, oh man, I gotta get to my final destination, which is Louisville, by the way. And I thought to myself, shit, I'm on vacation already. So I stopped this rest stop in Alabama. I am going to go buy a soda and I'm gonna sit on that bench right there and read a book for an hour. All right, time to get back on the road. But first, a road trip tradition. I mean, other than eating beef jerky. College road trip CD. Now, I can't play you what's on that CD for obvious copyright issues. So you're gonna have to take my word for it that each one of those tracks is a banger and there's nothing on there that's even remotely embarrassing. So I have been driving for a couple hours and I'm tired and I need a break and maybe some food. And I figured, since it's Monday, this place might make the most sense. So Monday Night Brewing was absolutely worth it. They had a lot of options. They had seltzers, they had cocktails, they had dark beer, hoppy beer, they had experimental stuff. They had a grisette on tap. Yeah, they were super tasty. And they had pretty good food. They had Mexican fusion pub fare. It was delicious. So if you're traveling anywhere near Birmingham or maybe you're just driving through like me, it is definitely worth a stop. All right, it's getting late and that sun's looking a little low. Time to get back on the road. So I'm here and I'm safe and sound and I did all five states in one go and my butt hurts from sitting so long. I think it might be time for bed. I just laid down and I can feel myself falling asleep. The room is comfortable, pretty bare bones. But uh, yeah, not bad for a first day. Uh, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Good morning, internet. So my parents came into town yesterday, and that was a lot of fun. Today we're gonna go exploring Mammoth Caves. I don't know what the lighting's gonna be like in there, but hopefully I'll be able to get some good shots. It can get down to 50 degrees in the caves, so came out to get my coat and my boots. All right, I'll see you inside. You know, this trip was really important to me because we were all fully vaxxed and this was the first time we had gotten to see each other in months. This was also gonna be our first time in a cave and I didn't know what to expect or how I would feel being a couple hundred feet underground. We decided to take a moderate tour that was pretty popular and I think it was perfect for a first time. Mammoth Cave was well, mammoth. It was beautiful and haunting at the same time. It had giant open spaces and there were a few tight squeezes as well, but I never felt claustrophobic. 
The air was cool and really fresh, which kind of surprised me. I expected it to be more stale or dank. It was the perfect activity for a hot day in July. Our guide was super knowledgeable and entertaining. And if you're going to be in the area, this is a must stop. All told, we spent about two hours underground, and I can't wait to go back and try some of the harder courses. That having been said, after those couple hours underground, we were pretty pooped. So we decided to grab some food, head back to the Airbnb. And I put the camera down for a couple of hours and just had a nice time with my family. Because, well, family's important. Good morning, Internet. So today is a pretty rainy day. We're going to go get some brunch and we're going to carbo load because we're also going on a distillery tour today. So, yeah, let's go. It wouldn't be a vacation if it didn't rain at least one day, yeah? Woo! Wild day. That seems like a place I can get breakfast. After a big breakfast I did not take nearly enough video of, we made our way to Copper and King's Distillery, located in the old butcher town neighborhood of Louisville, and it is a really cool space. What makes Copper and King's different than most distilleries in bourbon country is that it makes brandy. They know they have to be a cut above to make a name for themselves in bourbon country, and the way they do this is through their custom-built pot stills which allow them to maintain a lot of the nuances you get of the fruit throughout the distilling process. This differentiates them from bourbon, because with bourbon, it's all about the barrel. And in that respect, because they're smack dab in the middle of bourbon country, they have some of the best barrels to choose from when it comes to aging their brandy. And the aging process at Copper and Kings is a unique one. They do what's called sonic aging. They rest their barrels on the racks in a rickhouse, and then they blast them with bass-heavy music, shaking the barrels and agitating the liquor inside the barrels, essentially making it age faster. When we were there, it was Missy Elliott's birthday, so they were having a Missy Marathon. You can actually go on their website and find out what the barrels are listening to that day and listen to it along at home. It's pretty cool. After a tour of the production floor and the aging space in the basement, it was up to the second floor for a tasting in their art gallery space, which I'm just going to shut up for a second and let you enjoy. While Copper and Kings mainly focuses on brandy production, they also make great gin and really tasty cordials. So after our tour and our tasting, we decided to climb the stairs one more time and check out the third floor, a craft cocktail lounge built right there to show all their spirits in action. Even if you didn't book a tour, I strongly suggest checking out the third floor cocktail lounge. It is fantastic. And while the obvious stars of the show were Copper and King spirits themselves, they did have a full bar for you to choose from. The space was beautiful, and you really couldn't beat the view. Good morning, Internet. I don't really have any plans today. I'm just going to go explore the city and see the sights. I'll take you along with me and, uh, yeah, show you anything cool I come across. Prepare for a montage. So I took a picture of this mural years ago, and honestly, I'm glad it's held up this long. If I remember correctly, there's 
like a pretty good coffee shop and a feminist rum gift shop, card shop, like bookstore, somewhere in that direction. And I'm gonna go see if I can find it. This might be the place, but I feel like it was across the street. I don't know, let's go in. Got some souvenirs for some friends. Some of you are gonna get some treats in the mail. Honestly, even if that was the wrong store, uh, this whole neighborhood seems pretty sweet. I feel like maybe this is the place I was thinking of? Let's go in. Hello there. Confirm with the staff. This is the place I'm trying to go. Y'all, I got some prints for my wall and a few other things to send some friends in the mail. Not only is it women owned, but it was also a space for local artists to hang their stuff in a gallery. They have prints, they have full finished pieces. It was very cool. If you're gonna be in the area, yeah, definitely stop by. And once again, I think I found the right coffee shop. I think this is the same place. And they just put on an iced pork shot latte, so <laughs> I'm excited. I got a big one. <laughs> the barista goes, it's like if coffee and the milk after Cinnamon Toast Crunch had a baby. And uh, yeah, it's delicious. Just in case I didn't make it abundantly clear because I was trying to figure out which coffee shop I was at. Quills. Yeah, fantastic. And as luck would have it, all that walking took me to my favorite bar in Louisville. Let's go. Meta is one of my very favorite cocktail lounges in the entire country. They have a really relaxed vibe, a really friendly bar staff, and the cocktails they make are next level. I mean, look at that. That's a syringe full of scotch in a frozen cocktail. But it's not just the skill that they bring to the cocktail game that keeps me coming back here. Meta is an industry bar, and it treats people who work in the service industry really well. It's easy to get to from downtown, and if you're visiting Louisville, even just for a day, I'd suggest doing drinks here. Oh, and uh, if you're a bartender, their bar shot of choice is Reinar. <laughs> 